Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. We'll be talking about Saudi Arabia's extension um, of the term of $3 billion deposit in the State Bank of Pakistan uh, through the Saudi fund uh, to help Pakistan uh, support Pakistan's economy. The ramifications of this very good development as far as Pakistan's economy is concerned, whether it will strengthen, go towards strengthening the rupee as it seems to already have done. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about that. Um, a little later on, we'll also be talking about the overall political situation as far as Punjab is concerned. We have um, seen, uh, as far as the former Prime Minister is concerned, he spoke today, but again, did not give any timeline, a specific date for dissolution of assemblies. He does seem to talk about it. Uh, what does he insinuate when he says that the government should come and speak to him, but after a date of the, of, uh, the next elections, which we've had now, uh, <clears throat> the minister, uh, Mariam Aurangzeb, say clearly will be um, the, 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 uh, the government will complete its term, which will be in August of uh, 2023. What are the developments as far as these uh, uh, new uh, as far as these uh, new statements that keep coming from the former prime minister? Whether there's any seriousness to it? What is the, the political party as far as the PTI is concerned? What strategy do they have when they make these statements? Uh, we'll be talking about that as far as the legal options are concerned. As far as the political options are concerned, uh, what is on the table both for the government and the opposition? All of that today um, on Perspective. I have with me Dr. Khakan Najib, who's an economist. Uh, gee, Dr. Khakan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ji, Dr. Hakan, of course, this is a very welcome development as far as you know our whole uh, economic scenario is concerned. There's no doubt that we are in a difficult situation as far as economy is concerned. How do you see this development? We have also had uh, the finance minister say, um, you know, uh, tweet on it. He's uh, we've had the prime minister talk about how you know this is uh, of course welcoming the extension of term of the deposit um, by Saudi Arabia. Can you tell us a little bit? about it please so Maruf, uh, you've put it rightly uh, pa for Pakistan uh, it's a challenging situation f f globally <coughs> it's a difficult picture so you know we keep both these things in perspective let's look mm -hmm. at um, the the global picture high inflation slowing down of the economies um, due to high inflation higher interest rates so access to money for the developing world or the EMs what we call the emerging markets is difficult uh, in Pakistan's case, we are in a balance of payments challenge. And uh, for uh, the word that I've consistently used over the last mm. couple of months is that Pakistan is in a dollar liquidity crunch. What mm. that means is that we have to put together about 30 to 32 billion dollars together, which includes the kind of debt repayments, markups, commercial loans, bilateral loans, multilateral loans, and the current account deficit that we need to make. Um, we in that also account for the Saudi three billion dollars, which was due in November. Uh, you can uh, you will remember that this money came to Pakistan last November 2021 as a support in the State Bank of Pakistan to shore up the reserves. So uh, Pakistan with seven and a half billion dollars of reserves as of. 25th of November and another 500 million came in. So about $8 billion of reserves. Um, this is welcome that we don't have to repay the $3 billion, which was in November. Hmm. But it, for Pakistan to meet this $32 billion, go unscathed, by unscathed, I mean that this whole talk of default um, um, goes away, this whole talk of insolvency um, goes away, and uh, it should. The government or the authority's main task is to ensure that rollovers happen. So this is part of that $32 billion package that we need to mm. put together, that we have seen a $3 billion rollover mm. of the Saudi facility. But as you have rightly used the word, situation still remains very challenging for FY23. Um, mm. We have to complete the IMF 9th review, which has been delayed, which is a cause of concern. And uh, here I give the authorities a little leeway because there is a flood effect which has disturbed our macro and fiscal mm. picture. What that means mm. is our growth, our inflation figures, our um, FDR collection figures, 
have all been disturbed especially our agriculture growth has been hurt so uh, treading a very um, careful line uh, of course this roll over and we've always been grateful to his um, royal highness the people of um, ksa you also remember that they have given us a 1.2 billion dollar oil facility what that means is that the oil that we buy for 1.2 billion or up to 1.2 billion this year we will not have to make the payment for that in this fiscal year we will have to pay it next year um, um uh, one hopes that when he comes this would be further increase there is talk that this would go to 2.4 billion dollar and then there are other engagements with what KSA about we we, we have seen uh, you know rupee uh, do better uh, after this development overall how much effect will it have on strengthening the rupee for us maruf i know uh, <coughs> in pakistan rupee uh, has become uh, an important <coughs> part of our uh, discussion or our hmm. discourse hmm. um what i um, a, a worry more is that our reserves fall stops hmm. our exports stay comfortable our remittances okay. stay comfortable we get the 32 billion dollars so if we are able to do the things that i've mentioned to you and at the same time the imports which uh, had gone up to 7 billion dollars at one stage are hmm. managed more in the 5 to 5 and a half billion dollars a month now if we are able to do all these things these are the uh, short term macros that we need to manage uh, let's okay. hope that we do manage them and we manage them well then the 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 slide of the rupee or what i say is the disorderly movement you know when you saw the rupee um uh, move in 2 3 mm. 4 rupee chunks and move all the way to mm. 40 and um there mm. was a panic so that would go away um one thing on the rupee that i uh, am worried about is that there is a large difference between the interbank which you can call the official rate or on okay. which we open the lcs on which we do the <laughs> daily work in uh, from the state bank side um is near 224 but the open market the rate mm. is much higher and and yes. that uh, creates incentive for people to go outside the interbank and that's not good right and towards that you're saying that we need to take uh, you know probably stronger measures to combat that kind of discrepancy which you which we're looking at now between what the open market is and what we're having you know the official uh, figures so to speak and how do we move towards that Of course we are seeing the government clamp down on this. Yeah. You know, I mean there are a number of things that the government can do. One, um, mm. I think the best money out after friendly countries and the friendly countries of course mm. starting mm. from the kingdom um China next rollovers commercial mm. borrowings um and we, you know we are trying to make that effort. Okay. Um then um yeah, Qatar and UAE Um, hmm. we have also talked about investment with them so those things hmm. should now fall through there is a talk right, of 3 okay. billion dollars and then we will hopefully see a change right thank you so much for being with us thank you for joining us dr khakan najib thank you for your very valuable input we have with us shaza fatma khwaja who is an mna with pml n uh, thank you so much for being with us shaza can you hear me Uh, ji i can hear you maruf thank you ji shaza overall we are now looking at uh, you know a couple of since a couple of days we saw this new we saw the long march and we saw you know of course uh, the long march going ar- along uh, so many months and then we saw its um, you know uh, uh, climax so to speak where the, the former prime minister said th- again that he would be dissolving the assemblies but then now we haven't till now had him come up with given any date or or given uh, you know a specific timeline uh, there are all of these uh, things that are being alluded to but there's nothing on the ground so to speak why do you think there is this um, assertion there is this uh, you know alluding to something so major and then is it backing away is he not sure what is behind it in your opinion Uh, Maruf, can you please repeat the last part again? 
I am saying that there is always a certain alluding to a certain, you know, he gives a certain time, he talks about a certain, uh, uh, you know, a certain event happening and of course dissolution of assemblies in two of the major provinces is not something that he needs to ask anyone for. But we see him talking about it, alluding to it, but then backing away. Why is there this uncertainty? Um, you know, is he not sure? What is behind it? Is it a political move? How does the government look at it? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Maru. Uh, I believe that over the last four years, the way we've seen this country being governed by the PTI and Imran Khan, um, what is evident is that self-interest has always, and political interest has always preceded uh, the state interest, mm. and the country's in interest and the people's interest. And uh, it is it has been uh, clear on multiple, uh, you know, uh, levels and at multiple times uh, when uh, there's been a choice, it has always been vested in political interest. I can give you a couple of examples, very decent examples, of mm -hmm. where Shaukar Tareen Saab, uh, you know, is uh, talking to the finance minister of Punjab and the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and are trying to, uh, you know, sabotage the IMF deal. And one of them actually says that it's not against the country's interest. And there's a general agreement, but there's also an agreement to still go forward with it. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's just one example. And, um, uh, you know, starting from uh, back from 2014, uh, when Khan Saab comes with his dharna in the middle of the then, uh, you know, existential crisis of, uh, 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 you know, 22 hours of load shedding, energy crisis, there was terrorism was at peak and we saw how it ended, unfortunately. Uh, there was a transfer, uh, infrastructural breakdown. And uh, in the middle of it, uh, Khan Saab's dharna comes for his, again, for his political gains, uh, delays the Saudi uh, visit and investment, delays uh, the Chinese investment by about eight to nine months. Uh, mm. So at, whether it, were, it has been opposition or government, uh, it has always been the personal interest that has uh, preceded the state interest. <coughs> and even today when we see that his government was very constitutionally uh, you know, removed by a vote of no confidence, uh, which is an absolutely constitutional measure. Uh, we still saw uh, Khan Saab, you know, dissolving the parliament rather than being ready uh, to leave his premiership. And as a result, being stamped as a violator of the constitution of Pakistan, along with his president and his uh, deputy speaker and the speaker of Punjab Assembly. All of them, Supreme Court declares them as violators of uh, the Constitution of Pakistan. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, there has never been state interest that has been at the forefront. And this is what is happening right now as well. Despite but Shaza, even where, I mean, granted, like you are saying that, you yeah. know, his own interest, his own politics has taken precedence over um, you yeah. know, state interest. But even there, yeah. we see a certain, you know, he talks about a certain thing, but then he backtracks. Of course, there's nothing to prevent him at this time when we look at the overall scenario <laughs> going forward. But he doesn't seem to feel the kind of confidence. Um, was it something said to perhaps, um, you know, was he expecting more reaction from the government? Was he expecting, um, you know, uh, the government to perhaps, uh, you know, feel more, uh, come up with some kind of, uh, you know, give him some, some so to speak, uh, solution to whatever he deems as, you know, for him, of course, he keeps talking about early elections. That hasn't come, that kind of reaction hasn't come. What is it in your opinion? My uh, opinion, you know, his uh, exaggerated idea of his of his own self uh, mm. which had been further supported by uh, as has been now openly accepted um, by the outgoing chief as well uh, mm. he was he had a constant support uh, which i believe exaggerated and inflated his idea of his own of his own self mm. uh, and once that support was you know uh, withdrawn uh, he did not, uh, in, this is my very personal opinion, that he does not realize the ground realities and his own actual true position in the political landscape of Pakistan. So okay. as soon as that support was withdrawn, he, had, he was, you know, in the same uh, frame of mind that mm. his pressure tactics will work, uh, mm. that the government will, mm. you know, uh, come under pressure and will <coughs> give in to his... Uh, 
demands whatever these demands are which is essentially to dissolve the parliament if he's not uh, the premier um mm. which we feel are very unjustified uh, mm. we've had multiple change uh, changes uh, when it comes to the prime ministers <coughs> within our government but we still you know uh, preferred that that parliament tenure should not be uh, hampered should not be mm. cut short uh, so we genuinely believe that these five years the parliament should complete and yes he's he has been completely mistaken uh, and has overestimated um, uh, you know uh, his uh, political importance right. when it comes let to me, it uh, so sir, let me has, let me come back to you on that note we have with us uh, right we have with us abdullah mamtaz kaloon uh, from the pti i will come back to you ji abdullah can you hear me Shaza, one of you know, you mentioned two or three things. You said that he, there has been, you know, we've been talking the government when it stepped into its role after the vote of no confidence has been, you know, we've seen the prime minister talk about economy, uh, and then of course the flood situation overall. We've had uh, the climate change issue. We've had them take it up on international level. All of those things. Uh, you know as far as the agenda of the government is concerned the economy and economics of the country overall the status of the rupee seems to have taken precedence over everything else but of course there's along with that a certain uncertainty the price of political uncertainty which the economy has been paying um you know like you earlier also you mentioned that you know political interest taking precedence over state interest as far as that is concerned do you think that we are also uh, you know the former prime minister talks about economy even today when he spoke he said that you know well the economic situation he keeps talking about it but the point is as far as his own contribution um in terms uh, you know in fueling that kind of political uncertainty that invariably has economic cost um do you think that that has escaped the notice of his followers because that is also consistent since the vote of no confidence undoubtedly so uh, i mean uh, and it's not that he's not unaware of what he's doing i think it's deliberate uh, and it is again evident from the fact that just before uh, he knew that his government had crumbled under its own weight and there was a vote of no confidence that would succeed Mm. So this is just an example he reduces the price of petrol by 40 rupees now mm. the imf deal that his own government has done with the imf <coughs> uh, requires him to put a levy requires him to increase the cost of petrol uh, to around 200 but instead he reduces his by, it by rupees 40 bleeding uh, more than 100 billion rupees per month of the country just for his own sake just for political mm. gimmicks uh so for him i think uh, it is not a coincidence or it is not a collateral uh, economy is not a collateral uh, rather i sometimes feel that it is a deliberate attempt to collapse the economy of the country like i've given you the example of shaukat reen sahab as well uh, mm. that it is a deliberate mm. attempt to uh, ensure that the economy mm. of the country collapses Uh, until and unless he himself is the premier but uh, shaza when we talk about until he himself we saw earlier on when the pti government came into power there was a lot said in terms of you know the economic plan that they had but you know we've all seen uh, the 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 situation that invariably led to the vote of no confidence the economic situation as far as uh, you know the country is concerned during the time that the former prime minister himself and his party was in power now when you know they talk about economy even today he spoke about economy do you think that you know there is going to be it's easy now for him to talk about economy the challenges the government faces but how do, do you think there's a plan in place at all because were there a plan would the former prime minister and his party not return to the parliament was there seriousness would they not come and contribute uh, you know in as as in effective opposition in the assemblies no, look what uh, is that uh, i think uh, we're talking about the same thing here hmm the he has no economic plan that's a given because that's mm. what we see how the economy spiraled from a 6% growth to a minus 1% growth even before covid came mm. uh there is no economic plan there and it was again evident from the multiple changes of uh, his finance ministers of his finance secretaries 
you know it's a, a complete uncertainty comes there's, there's no consistency in uh, uh, economic policy per se over the last four years so they don't have a plan that's a given hmm. but if they're not in power their plan definitely is to ensure that whatever anyone else is doing hmm. the economic collapse in in order to ensure some sort hmm. of an economic collapse just to hmm. justify their politics is hmm. a part of their plan what i'm saying okay. is that it is not uh, the the you know the uncertainty in economy caused by his political action is hmm. not something uh, which is coincidental economy is not a collateral of his political uh, you know gimmicks but it hmm. is actually a target of his political gimmicks Uh, But so, Shaza, you know, what about what about the the options at this time, as far as the government is concerned? You know, there is a statement coming from Rana Sana Allah saying that you know there's all legal options are open to the government. But overall, in terms of what the government proposes to do about uh, this dissolution, we don't have a timeline. We don't know if it'll come, it, it, whether it will come at all, um, whether a date has been given at all. So things are in a flux as far as the PTI is concerned. But as far as the government itself is concerned, um, are, what options are open to them, and uh, what is the plan? Um, you know, to to uh, f- as far as this move is concerned from the PTI. uh we are working day in and day out uh, regardless of what they do and what they plan okay. to do. Mm-hmm. uh they 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 can be on the street they've just done multiple uh, you know gatherings political gatherings and protests which is their right which is fine by us uh, mm-hmm. but we're working to our best of capacities at the expense of our political capital uh, to restore the basic stability in the economy of pakistan that they have completely destroyed and tried to completely uproot uh, the economic stability so we're working day and night to resolve mm. those basic critical issues as have already been pointed out by uh, the panelists who were speaking before me uh, mm. so you know controlling imports ensuring uh, increase in exports uh, you know i'm not going to say that we're the best of or even at the optimal position at this point in time when it comes to economy or inflation uh but rest assured uh, everyone's burning the midnight oil to make sure uh, that we at at least in a few months uh come back to a stable position where our economy can self sustain and we can start you know uh going back to uh resolving our more important uh issues which have been put on the back burner right now because of the economic crisis that ha- that we've been uh you know endowed with courtesy to Imran Khan sahab uh, so those important issues uh, being the flood victims those important mm. issues being health education infrastructure in the country uh, so we're really hoping that we'll be able to soon stabilize the very critical issues right now and then move on to these very important issues uh, but chaza what about uh, so, so you're saying that it's not of particular concern to you uh, these statements that do come from the PTI chief and whether they will uh, you know whether they move towards dissolution or not you are adamant and you want to ensure that uh, the federal government the national assembly will complete its tenure definitely most definitely and uh, there there are no two uh, ways about it uh, the federal government will complete its tenure which is uh, till august mid august next uh, next year and uh, the elections are scheduled to be in october or november next year uh so they've been asking for a date for election we've been giving this date since the day uh, they've come on the street uh and we are uh, completely sure of the fact that we will complete the federal government tenure right thank you so much for joining us thank you for being with us uh, shaza fatma khwaja will be taking a short break after which we'll come back and talk about uh, what uh, this new move by the pti chief can mean thank you so much for being with us
Welcome to Sports Extra. I'm your host, Ahmed Mabrish. Great Pakistan. Great I love Pakistan. Yeah, he loved my first day in, in Pakistan. I've been welcomed and the people have been so warm, so hospitable. The people of Pakistan are some of the most welcoming and some of the most passionate, especially for what we do. Whatever we can possibly get for the youth of Pakistan uh, should be introduced in Pakistan. Is it the Pakistan flag flying at these events is a massive win for the country. Shan Masood has evolved a lot. And I genuinely feel Two or three guys that can bowl 90 miles an hour, you know, got a mystery spinner. And when it's a global sport, it should be played in any country regardless of where it is. It cannot get bigger than what we've got tonight. It's just really amazing to be here. Pakistan, in the... Welcome back. We have with us uh, Barrister Yasir Latif uh, Hamdani. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and we have with us Abdullah Mamtaz Kaloon, who is with the PTI. Um, I'm going to start with you, Yasir. Overall, as far as we've been talking, we were earlier talking to Shaza also, as far as this new statement by, uh, well, new uh, since a couple of days ago, we heard about the dissolution of assemblies. Of course, like I said, you know, we don't have a timeline. We don't have a particular date yet. Um, <clears throat> How do you see this legally speaking? Of course, there's nothing to bar uh, the former prime minister from doing it today, you mm -hmm. know, if he has all his allies with him, if he has all, um, you know, legally, of course, he is uh, in government in both KP and Punjab. Why the delay in your opinion? Well, I think uh, the delay is because his allies are not on board, mm -hmm. or at least he's trying to convince them. Okay. Uh, as far as the legal position is concerned, obviously he could have done it a long time ago. Mm. I mean, this could have happened six months ago. You think it was a pressure tactic? That it was it was a statement made to pressurize the government and they don't, don't seem to be taking any pressure? They're not taking any pressure because mm. there's no need to take pressure. Mm. Uh, the National Assembly doesn't get dissolved mm. just because two of your major provinces get dissolved. I mm. mean, this is the only thing, the only foreseeable consequence that mm. I see of this entire mm. situation is that you'll have perennially you'll have different election times for Punjab and KP hmm. from here hmm. on. Hmm. But that itself is not something unique. I mean, <coughs> you have different states in, say, for example, in India, hmm. which have elections in, at different times of the, you know, the, the parliamentary so legally term. there's no bar. There's no bar. Of whatsoever. course, in terms of, you know, perhaps the timeline, perhaps uh, the fact that it hasn't been done before in Pakistan. Yes, uh, is are one of those you know. It, so that's those are probably the the practical um, issues that may emerge. But legally, like you're saying, there's nothing to. Let me come back to you. We have with us Abdullah Mamtaz Kaloon. Um, G Abdullah, can you hear me? Uh, I can indeed. Thank you. For Abdullah, we're talking about uh, the statement by the former prime minister. Of course, you know there have been refutations um, from your party, from him himself, from his allies also. But why the delay then, um, in your opinion, as far as the disillusion is concerned? When, of course, even today when the former Prime Minister spoke, he said uh, that, uh, you know, the government, he's willing to sit with the government provided there's a date. And the government seems quite adamant that that date is um, August of uh, next year, which is uh, the term of the, of the uh, constitutional term of uh, the National Assembly. So why not move forward then? Why is there uh, this delay? in this dissolution, if this is going to happen? Mar Maruk, first of all, let me, let me address the question that you asked to Barrister mm. Sahib. First mm. of all, legally, the Chief Executive of the Punjab and the Chief <coughs> Executive of the KPK Assemblies, which are the Chief Ministers, have the constitutional right to dissolve these assemblies at their own leisure. So there's no constitutional term that they have to do it within the five years. They can do it whenever. Just by convention that they've been doing it after five years, it, it does not mean there's a particular law pertaining to that. That's the first okay. thing. Second thing I want to say is that the PDM government, if you can see the past six months, their economic car crash of a per per performance, for the first time this country... But Abdullah, that's not... I, I mean, we're Mar not Mar debating Mar Mar on I'm the econ I'm I'm economics. What I'm, I'm asking is why Mar the delay from, 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 from the former Prime Minister himself? Mar there's no delay. There's no delay whatsoever. There's no delay. What, is there a time, is there a day when it's going to happen? Do you know? 
what seems to you to be to be a delay is not a delay. Maruf, there has okay. to be procedural uh, uh, effects that okay. have to take place. Khan Saab has mm-hmm. met the PTI MPAs today. He's meeting the from Punjab. He's meeting the KPK MP, MPAs tomorrow. He's taking them mm-hmm. all into confidence. He's already taken okay. the PMLQ. So you're saying that it will go forward. Mar- 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 let, uh, let, uh, I have to finish this. Please. I'm just clarifying. I'm asking yes. a question. Is yes. you think that it, then it will definitely go forward the dissolution? Yes. yes. Mark, it will definitely go forward. There's no t- 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 two uh, uh, questions about that. It's definitely going forward. Today, he met the PTI MPAs from Punjab. Tomorrow, he's meeting the PTI MPAs from KPK, and it is going forward. And uh, the reason why it's going forward, I'll tell you that as well. The hmm. PDM leadership, leaders like Rana Snaula, Esen Iqbal used to coax uh, on national TV. Why don't they dissolve their assemblies? in Punjab and KPK and then we'll talk about the dissolution of the National Assembly. Well, the thing mm. is, these people have failed to govern the past six months. But the Abdullah, legally the speaking, birth, do you Mar- agree Mar- Mar- that there's Mar- no Mar- bar Mar- for the National Mar- Assembly Mar- to keep continuing, even if there is such a dissolution, right? Legally well, speaking, Mar- as a lawyer. No Marik, if there's no legal bar, then why is mm. Ataullah Tarad running to the Supreme Court for reviews? We see Uzma Bukhari crying herself hoarse on national TV about uh, trying to do a vote of no confidence. If there's no mm. bar, then let it happen. Well, what are they so scared of? If they are, why are they running from... But you were saying, okay, there's let me come back to you. Now. Abdullah, let me, on that perception. note, let me come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Ji, um, Yasir, legally speaking, uh, you heard what um, Abdullah is saying. He's saying that, you know, the, the point is, you know, really there's the government can make statements they can decide what they want to do with the federal really um, you know it's up to uh, it seems prime of Ashai, up to mr khan to decide what he wants to do as far as punjab is concerned and yet there is a delay would mm-hmm. you agree there is a delay and i mm-hmm. think that's because of the the exigencies that mr khan faces mm-hmm. in punjab and kp mm-hmm. especially in punjab where you have a completely different party mm-hmm. who's CM is sitting on top. Without which they cannot go for, for any kind of dissolution. Exactly. I mean, that's a very real issue as far as Punjab is concerned. Precisely. So I think from what I could understand what Mr. Kalu was saying, mm. uh, his point was that, you know, basically what I got out of it mm. is that there is no consensus as of now. But as far as KP is concerned, the point is, as far in terms of uh, the card, uh, the cards left for the former Prime Minister, we saw as far as the march is concerned, you know, it stretched to months. Um, there was date, dates after dates given and then, you know, there was a slow march, of course, uh, it, the, the you know sad incident as far as his own uh, to uh, the the incident as far as uh, the bullet incident uh, to the former prime minister barring that i mean i do the point is overall it took months the march itself also and then it eventually concluded with this um, coming out as far as dissolution is concerned and now we are seeing about you know talk about how they, he will talk to his party he will talk to his people he will talk to his as far as kp is concerned as far as punjab is concerned um, where there is no other card left for the former prime minister. Mm-hmm. After this, what can he do? Nothing. I think he just has to <coughs> throw in the towel because I I can't imagine him having any other cards left. Mm. I think that given the situation, he mm. has to live with the fact that the elections are, at least the federal elections are going to happen in August or, or whenever, the three months mm. afterwards. I don't see them happening in centre for the next um, nine months or so. Uh, so that's that's there, that's mm. done. I think his entire gamble, the ga- gambit that he has, mm. is whether or not um, by dissolving two major provincial assemblies, the government would kind of come under pressure. Mm. That's the entire game that he's playing. As far as at this time, the government has categorically refused to take pressure. They're saying, go ahead, you know, this is our timeline, this is our when we will hold elections and that is August of 2023. Precisely. Right. And they're not <coughs> overall. <coughs> Let me come back to you. I'm going to go to Abdullah. Abdullah, can you hear me? respond to something you said earlier? Uh, Abdullah, as far as the overall situation is concerned, when we talk about the former Prime Minister spoke about economy today, you yourself yeah. also mentioned economy as far as uh, the situation of the country is concerned. Do you think, you know, we, we have been talking about this while the march was happening also. 
um, you know, there was a certain allusion, allude, um, you know, alluding to the fact that perhaps there would be some compromise, all of those things. When the former prime minister says that give me a date for the elections and the government responds with saying uh, that it's uh, August of 2023, uh, there is no, in your opinion now, you know, he can't go back and as a political party decide to be a part of these national, uh, to be a part of the National Assembly when he's talking about dissolution. The cost of that, the, the, the political uncertainty which then translates into economic uncertainty, um, is a very real cost that Pakistan is paying. Um, is, isn't that something that is of any concern to the PTI as a political party and the former Prime Minister himself? Maruk, I can ask the same question to Shabash Shreef and Asif Zardari. Were they prepared to pay the cost when they brought the vote of no confidence in April 10th of this year? Did they not know that uh, where we were going? <coughs> so you're saying that. Point? So you're saying that there is aware, that cost, and you aware. are willing to ignore Mark, it. I have to, Mark, you have to let me answer the question. If we, if, if it's going to be a one-sided dialogue, there is no point in me being here. So the thing I is, always, Mark, I always let you answer, Abdullah. Please go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Maruk. The thing is, Maruk, for the first time since 1947, our country is on the verge of economic default, sovereign default. Mm. And while mm. it's on sovereign default, we've had six months of economic car crash performance. <coughs> we've, seen two, we've seen two finance ministers. The second one is as clueless as the first. In, in, instead, the first one's writing now articles in Dawn to try to explain his policies, which don't, still don't make sense. Yesterday, I stayed up to watch the TV interview of Asif Zadari Saab, hoping to find out whether they have an economic plan, turns out they have zero economic plan. The reason Khansa wants elections <coughs> now as opposed to in August is we might not even have a country or an economy in August 2023. We need elections to happen now. The, the, the current setup, the sparse of a setup, the artificial setup. So you want to have them while you still have the country then? Baruch, we're in the country because we care about the country. Unlike, unlike yes, the Abdullah, Indian that is what I'm saying. I'm saying that in abroad. terms of... G, I'm saying that in terms of... A few months here and there. Why is it so important for the PTI at this time to Why have this disillusion, to move forward uh, towards early elections when it's really a question of a couple of months here and there? Um, and if you are so confident as a political party, if he is himself so confident of his own voter base, why is there, um, you know, this categorical refusal uh, to play ball for a few more months? Mark, why is the categorical refusal on PDN's part? Why are they being so intransigent when they do? They know for a fact they've got a zero economic plan. They know for a fact that their economy is in a complete shambles. And but the dollar is a mistake, why do you want to make it? They want to, why do they want to keep at the helm of affairs? I mean, there's no explanation for that either, other than simply uh, making amendments to the NAB law and causing further damage to our economy, which our future government with PTI, which will, which will get elected from the current polls that they are. Abdullah, if the dissolution goes forward, you are saying that it will. Um, and the government, the federal government does not, uh, you know, alter anything. They, they don't want to. They've said that they will not give a date. According to them, they've said that, you know, the date is when uh, the term of uh, parliament will expire in August of 2023. What will the PTI do then? Go for the elections again? You're already in power in these two provinces. Uh, Baruch, as far as the uh, uh, stance is very clear, we're going to be holding elections in uh, we're going to be dissolving these assemblies in KPK and Punjab. There will be mm. elections happening in this province and we'll come back with a greater majority. As far as the, the National Assembly is concerned, we'll keep pushing for elections to happen earlier. And I have to say that right now that the thing is it's not about a matter of months. It's about days and weeks. In fact, the highest the default, sovereign default risk is, is ever present by the end of December. It, Abdullah, it, it, but it, it, isn't it true say. that the by-elections that we've seen, while the trend has been in your party's favour, we've seen uh, the former Prime Minister himself lose one or two seats. Do you think, you know, if that trend were to, were to uh, be observed when you look at the, the larger picture, won't you end up losing seats rather than gaining them? Uh, Maruk Khan Saab is the most popular uh, politician mm. in Pakistan. That's mm. why we've seen these Mickey Mouse Tosha Khana cases that have been uh, conjured up by the PDM in a desperate attempt to have him disqualified. 
PTI is the most popular party at the grassroots level in Pakistan right now. Even if the PDM comes together, Abdullah, but, but you parties, don't agree that the saner, saner uh, approach would perhaps be to return to the parliament, to talk to the government, give out counter proposals as far as economy is concerned, criticize them if you feel that they are taking decisions um, which can be taken in a better manner. Those things, uh, you know, you're not willing to do at all as far as democracy is concerned, as far as parliamentary style of politics is concerned, because agitation on the roads has now ended. Disillusion seems to be uh, the last straw. Baruch, as far as uh, Prime Minister, ex Prime Minister Khan Saab's stance is very clear, mm. there can be no mm. discussion with this cabal of crooks mm. who have uh, destroyed, mm. single handedly destroyed our country's economy in the last six months. Right. And Abdullah, the, thank uh, you for being with us. Hand. Thank you for your very valuable input. Uh, Yasir, overall, as far as the, the overall scenario is concerned, what do you think will happen, legally speaking? Vote of confidence. Um, you know, the governor can, as I understand, call for a vote of confidence. He can. Um, and and yeah. the numbers will uh, determine. But what about the, the role of absentees? Does that still qualify as far after the judgment of the Supreme Court or no? Absentees, you mean? Uh, uh, people abstaining from voting. Abstaining. I mean. hmm. Yes, well, that, that doesn't count, of course. It doesn't count. It doesn't count, of course. And, uh, but that would depend on where their party leader had told them to vote. Right. Because okay. that's where the whip principle comes in. And that's something that the Supreme Court has now held. Mm. Uh, very clearly, and, and that is now good case law. Uh, right, okay. That is so. So, in terms of, in, so, so largely, as far as Punjab is concerned, it really depends on the allies in terms of PMLQ, uh, which we are hearing a lot about. But then, you know, there is also that delay that we don't know why it's there. Um, if there is that kind of confidence between uh, the PMLQ and the uh, PTI. I think one of the reasons for the delay, and this is purely mm. going by what I heard Mr. Kalon said, mm. you know, the, since I imagine that he has the confidence of PTI, mm. I think they're scared of losing more seats, more seats during the next, uh, and because the elections will happen, they have to happen within 60 days. Mm. So now you get two assemblies and l a lower, um, uh, a, s a smaller number of seats for PTI they're actually worse off. So I, I think worse off. So I think that's what is stopping them. You're from saying that the trend overall may be that they end up losing seats rather than gaining them. Exactly. And I think over the last uh, two months or so, uh, Mr. Imran Khan's narrative has completely exploded. Um, a lot of people have seen through what he's been saying on the mm. cipher issue, mm. Mm. on, on Tosha Khana, which was something that <coughs> Mr. Kahlo was talking about. But Tosha Khana issue is there. It's not going to go away. Neither is uh, foreign mm. funding for that matter. So I think that is something that is going to be an issue. And I think it is going to play out in electoral politics on the ground. Right. OK. Thank you so much for being with us. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Khakan Najib, Shaza Fatma Khwaja, Abdullah Mamtaz Kaloon, Barrister Yasir Latif. Thank you for being with us today. As far as the overall situation is concerned, certainly at this time, there is a delay um, in the ultimate dissolution of assemblies from the PTI chief. As far as, uh, of course, he said so. We don't know what the delay is about. But in terms of the government, the government seems adamant that they will complete their term regardless of uh, this last option that Mr. Khan has now uh, you know, shown as far as uh, uh, the card up his sleeve is concerned. Uh, what, are, uh, what we can expect in the next couple of weeks, we will know as far as the PTI itself is concerned, whether there will be a U-turn, whether they will follow through um, on this dissolution of assemblies or not. Um, of course, one hopes that we can move towards a more certain kind of politics um, instead of uh, statements like these which then fuel political uncertainty that translates into economic uncertainty. Thank you so much for joining us today on Facebook.